Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a Welly Trapant 601, fresh out of the box as you see. And I want you to take a good look at it now in this form because it's going to get the full weathering treatment. I'm doing a barn fine style customization today with salt chipping, a chemical dip and a tarp. I'm going to make a little terrain diorama to display it on too. The Trabant 601 was produced by VEB Saxonring in Zwickau, Saxony. It was the third generation of the model, built for the longest production time from 1964 to 1990. As a result, it's the best known Trabant model and often referred to simply as the Trevi. During this long production run, 2,818,547 Trabant 601s were produced, and it was the most common vehicle in the former East Germany. It can be considered East Germany's answer to West Germany's people's car, or the Volkswagen Beetle. Its purpose was to provide a cheap but still reliable car that was very affordable and also easy to repair and maintain. In recent years, these distinctive cars have become collector's items with growing popularity. Green Trabants are especially popular as they are rumored to bring good luck to their owners. This is going to a friend of mine in South Carolina, 2A HD Cat. I don't do commissions and sell my cars, but Cat made a very generous contribution to a children's hospital. So this is for you, Cat. I've got three builds coming up, boom, 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 all next weekend, starting with this special Luke's Challenge. There's a four horsemen build on the AMC Rebel machine at the end of the month. And the next in my personal series of Fury Road vehicles, the Giga Horse. Don't miss any. First big mistake of the day in the bonehead files is this. If you look at the car before I stripped it down, you remember this odd addition on the roof. Well, that wasn't made of die cast. Turns out that was plastic and melted away in the paint stripping gel. But no big worries. A little bit of masking tape from underneath and I apply some JB Weld on the top. And I smooth it out with this clay modeling tool that I have. Let that dry up overnight. Take the rough files to it. Smooth that right down, fill in the gaps nicely, but it's not perfectly smooth. So then I put some of this fine putty on top. Same that you use on your car for body work. And now it just takes some fine sandpaper. There's from the inside and the top, smooth as a baby's bum. In today's video, you can follow along with all the weathering steps that I take, beginning with a rust colored primer. I let that set up for an hour or so, and then just with some dollar store acrylic paints, here I've chosen an orange and a sponge, and the wrong car, <laughs> whoop, there's still what I'm working on, and I'm going to apply this. It, it's an undercoating, so rust comes in different colors, and I've got the dark brown, here are some orange highlights. This does not need to be specially beautiful because you're just going to see it in a speckled format when I'm all finished, hopefully something like this, real life Trabant. I've taped off the roof and this is a salt chipping technique where you first apply some mist water. I use the airbrush because it atomizes the water better, it doesn't leave big drops, and this is basic table salt. Some store is probably selling hobby salt for 10 times the amount. You just need what's on the kitchen table. It'll dry in place on top of the water. And then with the airbrush set on a fairly low pressure, I apply the base coat. In this case, it's yellow and it goes right over the salt. As you can see, if your pressure's too high, you might blow the salt away and you don't want to do that. And look what happens after the paint has set up. I just brush it off 
with an old toothbrush and you've got this beautiful authentic looking freckled look and we're not nearly done yet so don't judge it based on this remember it's several steps that I'll list for you in a, a screenshot coming up soon now I mask off the bottom do the mist water and the salt application on the top and now I'm doing a white coat just so I've got a two-tone here and again, it doesn't have to be beautiful or your best masking job, but I'm still, I take my time and try to do it right. Brush off the salt that was painted over, and there we go. Uh, it gives you an authentic look, in my opinion. There's got to be some off-colored panels when I do these cars, so I'm doing a side door in gray and I like the look when I hand brush this on instead of airbrushing it just gives it a rough sort of a homemade look like it was done with a roller or something starting to take shape well, I've done a clear coat over top of all of this apply a little bit of headlight detail and now with a burr tool a titanium tip. I'm doing some bare metal distressing right down to the die cast body, removing the paint in the areas that I want to look the most rusted out. Here you can see the shiny die cast and using iron 3 chloride very carefully and responsibly it attacks the bare metal and now I've got this 3D relief look. Whatever had been acrylic painted and clear coated is not affected by the chemical dip. A bit of rust wash goes on next over the whole car. It all contributes to the look. And then I even water down the rust so that I don't lose too much of the contrast between the yellow and the white. With my X-Acto knife, I scratch in some spider web cracks on the front windshield. Looks like that. And this is a new move for me. This is a uh, textured weathering. Just one of the ground effects, and they come in many colors. But I want to look like there's been a rat's nest made on the inside interior. Here's on the bottom of the chassis, just where the mud's been thrown up, etc. We're not anywhere near the end, but at this point I can safely start to reassemble things as you would normally at the end of any other project. But there's still many steps to go. This is actually a pullback toy. You see that white square that I'm handling right now? That's the little engine. And it still works fine because it was brand new, remember? And I lock it all down with the screws that I've pre-fit in here after drilling out those posts. Okay. That's looking exactly like I wanted it to, but I've got these chrome details. There it goes with the pullback action. And these are way too shiny for a barn find, but I need to apply them first before I do some weathering. There's the grill. I'm going to hang the front bumper a little bit askew like this, as if it's come apart on one side and it's dropping down to the ground. I just want it to look abandoned. <laughs> it won't be this bad, but it's going to be some serious weathering. This might be my third or fourth tissue paper tarp. I like this effect as well. It's just kind of fun to play with. And because it's a barn find, I want it to be sort of half pulled back and revealing what's underneath. I use a Mod Podge. Sometimes I water it down just a little bit. Fold it up, apply it, make it look however you want. I, I want to expose a good part of the car and cover up the rest. One of my recent trips to the thrift shop I bought some broken and discarded picture frames. This is about a 5 by 7 and I put some wall spackling plaster on there. 
drop a few hobby stones in place and then I remove the tape so I've got a nice clean edge here and you can paint this up however you want. I want it to look like a muddy patch behind the barn out in the field. I put the little frame back on it and remove the stand and here are some diorama effects that I've got and I won't glue these down because I want them they can be moved around and adjusted to look just the way you want it. Black wash goes over the tarp I dab off any excess and then the same textured ground effect goo goes on to look like some bird droppings on the front and now I'm able to apply the final Tamiya weathering powders just to give it a dusty effect on the windshield on the tires on the tarp everything's been out in the blowing dust and this makes a big transformation too although it's right at the end now we've got one really old looking car you can do a, a freeze right here and pause the video there's all the steps that I took today to try to make my new car look like this really old one. Let's zoom in for a closer look. See the hubcaps are rusted up. I've got this beautiful patina on here. I don't think I could do that by hand so I'm a big proponent of the salt chipping and the chemical dip. See around the wheel flares I've got extra rust. The washers contribute to that. The dusting all made it look just right. Here it is in its original out-of-the-box form. Very beautiful, super popular car from the former East Germany. And if you see one today, it might be out behind a barn or in a field looking more like this. I'm really pleased with the final effect that I got and it shows off well in these glamour shots and cat i hope you appreciate this you wanted an odd eastern block car and we decided together on the trabant and this is just my vision of how it would look if it was really abandoned <laughs> you could still play with it on your desktop the pullback works beautifully and it's coming your way, my friend, with a certificate of authenticity. I'll include the diorama for you too, my brother. I hope you appreciate it, and I hope everybody watching enjoyed this video. Come on back soon, and often, it's coffee time.